Welcome to the Play 21 mini Let's Plays. And today we have with us uh, Hendrik from Indoor Astronaut uh, from Switzerland with his game Unrailed. Welcome. Hi. Uh, so we only have 10 minutes. And uh, first off, there is a little warm up with some sentences you can try to complete. Are you ready? I am very much ready. Okay, let's go. This morning I drank. Um, actually, just a glass of water. <laughs> My main occupation is... I'm a game developer. Very good. <laughs> I would describe myself as... Uh, oh my god. Um, right now? Uh, excited. Mm -hmm. My superpower is... <laughs> god. Uh, creating, um, creating games that are fun to play for everyone. I guess. Yeah, it's a very good goal. Um, <laughs> The thing I'm holding in my hand most of the time is my mouse. Yeah. <laughs> During the pandemic, I I work from home, um, which went pretty good actually. Mm -hmm. And after the pandemic, I will <laughs> I will work from the office again, hopefully. Uh -huh. <laughs> um. Okay. Last two. I'm creating interactive works because... Well, because it's fun to see people play together in our case, since, we're co since we make co-op games. Um, yeah, it's fun to see people play together, enjoy games together. Mm -hmm. And uh, last one, the future of games will be... Oh, very much indie focused. There's, there's, in the last couple of years, there's been a huge community of new indie games coming out and also now indie handhelds and consoles so i I'll, i want to see this just get more and more yeah the uh, how's it called uh, indie capolips or something like that <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> but it's not a capolix capolips it's more like a uh, elysium <laughs> ah, yeah okay nice <laughs> um yeah nice uh, thanks for that uh, I would say let's jump in to uh, the game. Um, dun, dun, dun. There we go. So it's called Unrailed. Um, and That's correct, yeah. Yeah, it, it, uh, I guess it has something to do with rails. Also correct, yeah. <laughs> what, what is it about? So in, in basic, the game is about you start on a map and there's an engine. Uh, on some tracks and it's already running and what you have to do is basically mine res resources and craft tracks and build this train track faster than the train can reach the end basically so you're always under pressure oh god under pressure and uh, trying to play it at the same time okay let's see um what what can we see right here okay so right now you're playing uh, the single player mode so what you get is a bot that helps you and what you two are doing is basically mining iron and mining wood. Um, and what you have to do is bring those resources right back to the back to the box wagon on the train. And then the crafter will start once you have both resources in that box, will start to create uh, tracks. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And these tracks you then have to use um, to, um, to uh, lengthen your already existing train track and prevent the train from crashing, which it will do uh, um, in the next couple of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! There you go. That's fine, you can... I can didn't want that. to do this. It's inefficient. <laughs> that, that's true, yeah. That is true. What, what, what is this bot so, yeah. doing? <laughs> um, oh, uh, he's doing what you what you tell him to do. Right yeah, now it's true. at the mine, oh, mine wood setting. Yes, there, there's lots of wood here now. Okay, interesting. Um, so, but but there but there are things going on, right? So um, normally you you play it with uh, with other characters, and uh, how many players can play it at the same time? At the same time, four players. Yeah, um, and normally, obviously, there's a lot going on. You have to right sync up between the players. Look where you want to build your path. Also, as you can see right now, the train catches on fire, and you have to put that fire out in time yeah um and then you also have to counter 
um, enemies at the moment you're uh, starting in the first biome there's just cows that kind of stand in the way but later on this gets a bit more well let's say chaotic <laughs> and there's a lot more intrusive enemies to put it like that and then also we have this versus mode where it's where you have two teams that have to uh, finish the the level as fast as possible or at least faster than the other team and that's that cool. is another yeah. whole other level of chaos and uh, the game was under development for quite some while i saw it was a student project first and then you um, did some paper prototyping as well how, how did you come up with exactly. the with the idea uh, that's a good question so yeah as you said the, the the game we started working on in university at a university and basically we wanted to do some cooperative game um, because we all enjoy cooperative games and one of the inspirations was Overcooked, right? This um, time management game, but also one of the requirements of the lecture this um, prototype was based on was that we had to do a game based on the topic called Alfred Escher. And that guy is in Switzerland, well known <laughs> worldwide, probably not that much, but what he did is he's responsible for the creation of the Swiss railways, more or less. Mm, okay, cool. And so, yeah, the, the topic of the, the idea of having char characters build actually a railway came with this character, this Alfred Ash character in mind came pretty fast. Mm. Yeah, and yeah, we, have, we had then a, a basic paper prototype that already had many elements of the things you see in the final game. And then we just iterated from that for, I guess, two years and then <laughs> we published the game. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah. And uh, how long was your early access phase? Um, and how much feedback did you get? A lot. I mean, we. The, the cool thing is, we already started very early to go to fairs, like play, for example, and got a lot of feedback during all these fairs and festivals. But uh, the game launched into early access in uh, 2019 in September, and then we had an early access period of about a year. And during that period, we got tons of feedback. Um, so we, we opened a Discord server and then just had a channel where people could put feedback and um, we got so much feedback. We, we, I mean, if, even if we would, uh, we couldn't implement it in the rest of our lifetimes. Mm. But we just started cherry picking what makes sense, what has the greatest impact, which people or what, what do most people want from the game, what is missing. Uh, and then started implementing that. For example, the single player bot you play with right now that wasn't in the early access at the start, but that was basically the the one feature that was wished by the most players. So we, yeah, started oh, implementing it. And um, when you did some play testing uh, at first, what, what was the, the the main thing people liked about the game? I think the the chaotic nature, the the fact that people. When, when they played, especially at, at festivals, um, when they can play against each other in a sense, of even if even though they have to play together, um, yeah, just this 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 need to, to communicate what what resources are necessary. For example, in situation right now, there would be certainly someone screaming, "Oh my God, the train is on fire! Get the water! Get the water!" And yeah, it, it was just great for us to see that the game was um, enticing, creating emotions in players, and that's. Uh, what made us realize, oh, this is a game people want to play. This is uh, something that has an audience, right? Mm. Um, and there are lots of details in there, like um, it's, so you have the meters downstairs, uh, downstairs uh, on on the side uh, of the board, which is really yep. cool. And um, even this replay feature, and uh, something which is which I didn't see this often is like that even the menu of the game is oh, yeah. already in the game. You, you can run around with your characters and stuff. Um, so there's so much stuff in there. Um, I, I, I don't know how you come up with all those ideas for it. It's, 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 it's just yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the menu that was, um, the menu was born out of this idea that we often play co cooperative games and it's always either um, you, you have these UI based, right? These two, two UI based menus, and it's either there's one player, the first that presses start or whatever, that selects the game yeah. and sets up whatever, or 
every player can um, maneuver this 2D menu and then it's total chaos because one is one player is play, pressing up, the other is pressing down and you never get to the button you actually want to. Yeah. And so we uh, thought a bit about how we can solve this issue of having players all in the same menu and having ways to agree upon on the choices and so we came up with this actually 3d walkable menu where if players want to confirm a choice they all have to stand on the same platform it's very democratic uh, in that way wait. exactly yeah <laughs> um so uh, in, in general what uh, would you say there's one big question so everybody gets at the at the end um yeah now i yeah now i'm at the end as well <laughs> can't get back i built something wrong um so um <laughs> What would you say is more true, that uh, games can help influencing societies or that uh, the society is uh, like a ref that games are a reflection on society? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess it's it's a, a mutual influence, right? So obviously uh, games are born from the, from society, right? We as game developers are influenced by whoever is playing games and what the games that came before our games were. But then also the games help people communicate or help the developers communicate some ideas to people. And so games obviously also influence society, like any art form. But in the, in the, form, in the, the game art form, obviously more interactive than most other art forms, which yeah. is probably the great thing about games, right? Sure. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, ah, okay, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. So, yeah, what I want to say is the cool thing about games is that it, con contrary to, to books or movies, that you, you do stuff in games and what you do uh, cr creates emotion, right? So, sure. you're in a sense responsible for the emotion the game evokes in you. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to, uh, to ask what uh, your game con contributes, uh, kind of thing. So, so basically, uh, what do you hope people get out of the game playing it? Well, I, what I would hope is that that it helps. <laughs> in if I if we would uh, the, um, um, let's say prescribe Unreal as 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 a therapy, I would hope that people get out, uh, learn to communicate better together. Um, and learn to, well, achieve something while working together. Yeah. Well, that is very nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> is there something you want to uh, uh, say to the audience? Something which is up and coming, maybe um, next project or uh, any message you like? Well, we're working on something, but that's <laughs> all I'm going to say here. So look forward to that. But other than that, just enjoy enjoy playing games, enjoy playing games together, and also enjoy play. Yes, and enjoy playing Unreal at play, uh, of course. And uh, or also that, yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> Very nice. Um, yeah, thanks for the talk. That's it. Um, see you, you at too. the festival. <laughs> bye bye. You. Bye. <laughs>